Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Uh, liking helps the YouTube algorithm and is really a free way to support the channel, right? And um, get the, hopefully get the quality content out to the traders that need it and uh, trading 180 our trade process is really to apply fundamental analysis to establish our directional bias for the medium to long term not necessarily short term day trading um, and then apply our technical analysis strategy so supply and demand strategies to time uh, trade entries establish profit targets and risk management so uh, getting into the week ahead and uh, going to trading economics on the week ahead, uh, we have earnings seasons, which isn't necessarily um, concerns us in currency world, but um, central banks in the euro area, Japan, Canada and Brazil will be deciding on monetary policy, which is always important. Uh, so we've got definitely uh, some potential market moving uh, news or price moving news um, if there are any surprises, right, because generally the market has uh, priced in what they think uh, the ECB are going to say. Uh, same thing with the Bank of Japan and Canada. We don't trade the Brazilian currency. So important data to follow include the third quarter GDP data from the US. That's always important. Uh, Eurozone and that's pretty much it. We got Australia inflation rate, um, Japan industrial production and elsewhere we've got the UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak will be revealing his autumn budget which is interesting for the uh for the guys that uh, live in the UK, that would definitely be keenly watched. Not necessarily just for, um, you know, for the fundamentals, but understanding what is going to go on in, you know, just like everyday lives and taxes and stuff like that, and what's getting, uh, what's the public services are being cut, etc. But uh, getting now into a bit of the nitty gritty, and we start off as we generally do on the dollar index. So zooming out, um, we can see the dollar index is a measure of, uh, it's just a measure of a dollar strength against the um, major currencies like the pound, the euro and the yen. But zooming out on the price chart, we can see that, you know, over the past couple of weeks, we did come to this uh, supply zone, which was uh, a, a bit of a major high, definitely watched by institutions. And overall, again, the path of least resistance is to the upside. When you think about what's happening fundamentally, um, the, the the dollar um, should want to strengthen. And um, part of the reason why that is, is because um, going back to trading economics, the Fed is on track to begin tapering, which is a reduction in the bond purchases, although it would be premature to uh, raise rates, Fed uh, Chair Powell said during a panel discussion at the Virtual Bank for International Settlements in South Africa Reserve Bank uh, Centenary Conference. So Powell also mentioned that supply bottlenecks are still weighing and have gotten worse in some uh, cases recently. At the same time, high inflation and pressure pressures on, on wages will likely last into next year, but will abate, yeah? So um, one of the, also, uh, again, a, a bit of a quote was that um, Fed, uh, the chair added, if we see serious risk on inflation, expectations persistently rising, we will use our tools, the tools being basically to, to high rates. So um, they do expect the, uh, to, 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 uh, to taper, which is generally positive for a currency, but um, raising rates might not be um, imminent. So uh, raising rates right now. So um, overall, generally, I would say probably the dollar is, should be more positive than negative. Um, especially when you compare it to other currencies, which is what you're supposed to be doing as a, as a fundamental trader anyway. So looking at the US dollar, um, I expected you know a bit of a pullback. In fact, I pretty expect a bit more of a pullback into that zone uh, to, to look for any kind of long trades, not on the dollar index, but um, just as some sort of confluence. So if you do get prices pull back into a demand zone, for example, on the dollar yen, uh, dollar Swiss, and you've also got um, a demand zone on the dollar currency index, you can use that as, as um, confluence. And then obviously you wanna see 
prices uh, you know a bit of a reversal candle um, whatever your entry is and uh, some bullish price action and then that's pretty much the direction that I would uh, or I am trading in of course not financial advice the um, if you are looking to potentially short the dollar because ultimately nobody knows exactly where prices will turn right this is the reason why we manage risk so price may continue to come down a bit more but that is would only be seen as probably a bit more of a bargain area to buy the dollar so if this level doesn't work then um, I would be looking for obviously um, uh, long trades uh, long trade confluence within this area um, but if you can if you do want to get short you're looking at this area uh, up at the uh, 94s above that 94.31 area for a potential short trade although again um, understanding why you'd want to get short there is you're really probably saying that the uh, the dollar is actually quite expensive up there but um uh, the fed again the fed uh, chair jerome powell is talking about uh tapering so that's generally positive and just quickly as well um in case any of you don't understand what supply chain disruption is um it's really a demand issue so i'll read a couple of uh, you know sentences and maybe a paragraph or so uh, explaining this so the stresses on the global economy are caused mainly by an increase in demand especially in the us so um, the first step towards understanding the great supply chain disruption of 2021 is to recognize that the phrase itself is not quite accurate supply chains are not disrupted so much as overloaded yeah and the effects are more uh, national than global so um, think about it like this right so they've got a, more of a um, supply can't keep up with demand there's a lot of demand but um, the supply chain what's what's delivering you know goods and services uh, and commodities um, the, the the transportation etc it's it's um there's a lot of demand right which is the reason why they they, they say things like bottlenecks right so um container shipping rates is this is, is a, um, an example right so container shipping rates for example for instance were more than five times higher in september than they were in september uh, uh sorry september 2021 than they were in september 2020 Right. So you've got, again, more demand five times higher now than they were a year ago, making matters worse. Overall congestion rates, congestion, um, especially at U.S. ports, was as high as 80 percent. So you've got loads of sh um, shipping containers and, and boats, etc. Um, but you haven't got enough ports, meaning that uh, there were four times as many ships waiting for, for a berth as were docked at any one time so this is what's causing the problem it's just the uh, the supply chain it's not um a a uh, um it's i guess a, a bit of a problem a massive problem in fact but it's something that can be resolved and hopefully uh, will be resolved but for now and this is the reason why jerome powell is saying that the inflation is potentially transitory because of the the inflation is being kind of driven up by the fact that um, there's a there's a scarcity in um, in commodities, right? So if there's scarcity in commodities and not enough commodities, then prices generally will go um, higher. Inflation will go higher. So um, that's really where the problem is. So once supply chain starts to get sorted out, then inflation should come down. Hence the reason why he's saying it's uh, uh, and and uh, central banks around the world believe that it could be a bit more transitory because once this ends, then inflation should come down, right? That's really the um, the, uh, the the theory. Anyways, getting back to the uh, to the technicals and uh, other currency pairs to analyze, and moving on to the um, the Japanese yen, uh, dollar yen, and uh, again we've seen this massive run up. Um, Again, due to fundamental analysis, when we think about how you know potentially strong the U.S. dollar is in comparison, um, uh, they haven't got the same issues as Japan, and uh, we're more in a risk-on environment. You can see that the uh, the, the stock market is making uh, new highs, but we you know should have a pullback, which we do have a bit of a pullback into this demand zone. Now, will prices turn around here? We understand that this was definitely um, a higher high, higher low. It was this was seen as a bargain price 
uh, last week or the week before, 13th of October into the 14th of October. So the question is, will this be a bargain now? Personally, I'd prefer prices to really, you know, come down to these areas here. But this is going to be the first area to look for any kind of uh, uh, buy trades if you're looking to buy the dollar. If you're looking to sell the dollar, meaning uh, or buy the Japanese yen, then that is a bit of a supply zone right there. So you're really looking for uh, prices to come back into this zone before looking at uh, getting short. But in getting short, you know, you're, what you're ultimately saying is that the uh, the, um, the the Japanese yen is is, an, is a bargain because ultimately um, something can be expensive for ages and something can be cheap for ages, right? A bargain for ages, but it's best to look at the market uh, as in looking for bargains because that's what we naturally want to do, buying a you know wholesale. We don't generally go out to the shops and look to see if something is um, expensive. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So we have to um, look at the market in that in that in those terms. So um, yeah, I think this zone is is a decent zone technically from a uh, from a value perspective. I'm not necessarily the, the most keen on it, but again, um, it's a decent area to get uh, to get long. Moving on to the dollar. Swiss and the dollar Swiss has come down, uh, pulled back a bit more. And that demand zone didn't hold too much, but now we're down into the 9150s, which I think is decent when we consider, um, I guess, uh, the yearly highs and the yearly lows. Uh, we are probably more coming towards the um, the, uh, the fair value, right? Yeah, so we're coming towards that fair value area. And um, so with that being said, in the context of that, I think anywhere probably starting to buy around now um, is decent. Again, it's not financial advice and you really have to understand that when we're in a risk off environment, if we are in a risk off environment, if there's risk off sentiment that comes into the market next week, the Swiss franc would generally uh, benefit from that. But in a risk on environment, the uh, US dollar should win hands down. I'm not saying it's gonna win every single week and it's not really, you know smart to kind of think of it as winning and losing but um it's more it's more uh, looking at it from a perspective of where should the part of resistance be right we should you know be trending higher right overall we don't know where the market's going to turn around but again the path of resistance should be to the upside so looking at um, you know, buy trades in and around these areas. I think, for me anyway, is um, is is decent, and I'll look for that. Uh, looking for sell trades. Uh, the, I think your your first area is going to be at this uh, ninety zero point nine two forty area. Uh, nice technically, but uh, I think overall, I think the ninety three forties to ninety three sixties is probably uh, the better area. And I'm going to just drag that down as well. Um, that encompasses all of that uh, supply. So anywhere within that zone, I think is going to the higher end of that zone is going to be uh, really nice for a potential for a sell. Moving on to the dollar CAD, and uh, the Canadian dollar um, is uh, one that um, I'm looking to buy. Um, um, if there's any kind of pullback, not necessarily against the dollar, but um, any other currency pairs. Um, but I do think that um, in a in a straight fight, you should the, the Canadian dollar. I think is just you know edges uh, the U.S. dollar, especially when you consider commodity currencies. But I mean commodities going higher anyway. Um, you know oil is predicted to go to one hundred dollars a barrel, and that should also support the Canadian dollar. Um, so if you are looking for any kind of short trades. Um, waiting for pullbacks. That's going to be the first area, that 125, uh, 1.25 area, to look for potential shorts. If you're looking for any uh, long trades and buying the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, I think now is probably um, a decent area to look for um, some long trades. So, um, not really much to kind of say about this this pair. I'm not really interested in it myself, but technically you're at some decent uh, some decent areas. Some nice areas as from a technical analysis perspective. Looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and uh, the New Zealand dollar is again way ahead of um, of most currencies uh, when it comes to monetary policy, and this is why you're seeing um, you know this type of uh, price action, right? You get that kind of parabolic move. You have to kind of expect a bit of profit taking, a bit of pullback. 
But if you want to get long on this currency pair at the moment, it's a bit of a difficult one. You'd have to really expect prices to either pull all the way back down here um, or to create some sort of higher highs, higher lows. And then you're looking for a pullback into a demand zone or it could happen something like this where you get that pullback and then you get that. So ultimately, um, uh, right now, there's nothing really setting up if you want to get long on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, if you want to get short, of course, there's always a technical reason. There's always going to be a technical reason why you should look for uh, any kind of trade um, in the direction when, it, when you're just looking at the technicals. Doesn't mean it's the smartest thing to do, but there is a short trade here. Um, and if you're looking at probably where the range is, the overall range, probably up top um, from this high uh, to this low is, is is decent, although that level has been touched several times, so it's not the most reliable level to look for any kind of short trades around there because you're pretty liable uh, to get stop hunted in that area. Um, so yeah, not really much, I don't think at the moment on the New Zealand dollar, um, but those are the options so far. Looking at the pound dollar and the pound, um, yeah, there, this was a decent area to look for potential shorts, but just price didn't work out. I didn't take this trade. I'm not really interested too much in this currency pair and unless it comes to like the 139 area. Um, the guys in the uh, in the uh, Discord group will know exactly why we're looking at that 139 area. But um, ultimately, we don't know, where, know whether it will get up there, right? Not too sure. Are we going to be patient and it just the trade that either leaves without us, and in, in which case that's fine. Um, but, um, but if it does come out to that 139 area, that's probably where I wouldn't look, would look for any kind of short trades. But if you are getting short now, there is, um, you know, you should be in some decent profit depending on where you manage to get involved in this trade. Um, with the pound fundamentally, um, Britain's economy finds out what it means to live with COVID. So you've got uh, a bit of a, um, a cocktail of, uh, of stagflation uh, potentially going on stagflation meaning where you've got uh, economic uh, an economic slowdown but you've got rising inflation so um, households face rate hikes yeah so that's basically more money out of their pocket if you're if you if you have a mortgage for example um, you know that um, interest rate hikes um, will affect your uh, repayments on your mortgage and if you're already struggling uh, to pay your mortgage or your you know household bills that's one thing that you don't really need so we've got tax rises on 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 the uh, on the rise um, that's going to be another thing to to really kind of uh, um, stop consumers or, or people in general from really going out and spending in the economy right because ultimately that's what we want to happen that's what, what boosts um, economic growth is spending not saving uh, inflation so devaluation of a currency and an energy crunch right and we've got the petrol crisis still and and and, and the like so on top of that, the economy is faltering just as COVID cases and deaths are rising. So, um, you know, after 19 months spent attempting to ward off COVID-19 while safeguarding jobs and businesses, the UK is heading into winter with a growing problem. The coronavirus is spreading rapidly just as the economy starts to get going in the opposite direction. So there's problems, massive, massive problems. The UK cases are accelerating faster than in other Western European countries or nations, while deaths have jumped to their highest since March. Government ministers have are having to deny they are planning for a new lockdown. So, and at the same time, yeah, economic growth is slowing, inflation is running high, the Bank of England is expecting to hike rates soon and households are facing a cost of living crisis so it's just uh it's an absolute potential mess not necessarily a mess at the moment but um very very mixed messages so um i've been saying this for maybe the past month or so that um i'm looking for short trades on the pound not necessarily against the dollar um is my number one trade but pound um uh, um, I'm looking for more short trades against the pound against stronger currencies. So um, for me, the direction of travel should be to the downside. Um, not saying it's going to be this week, but overall, I think again, if you look at where you know the, the trend is over the past, you know, maybe four or five months, we've definitely seen 
prices are trending to the downside and that's not an indication as to why you should want to potentially look for a, uh, a trade to the downside it's just letting you know where the weakness is in a currency which is driven by risk sentiment and fundamental analysis so um, for me this area is nice if prices can come up to that 139 area I think that for me is going to be um, a, a, a bit of a trade but other than that I'm not, I'm not really interested in where it is right now um, ultimately uh, we could I say we but the UK economy could get resolved and um, you know things get back on track and if it does I think this is going to be a really nice level or any buyers in these demand zones potentially should be uh, decent buyers but ultimately you're um, you're really kind of uh, 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 betting on um, I think um, a bit of a obviously a losing cause, but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of confusion in the market, and also as well, uh, Financial Times uh, in, saying that investors worry over potential uh, Bank of England rates mistakes. So traders fear policymakers will move too aggressively in their attempts to tame inflation. So uh, investors uh, investor concern is rising that the Bank of England is moving too swiftly to tighten monetary policy as it gears up to become one of the first central banks to raise rates following the coronavirus crisis generally a hike in rates is positive for a currency um, unless um, it could a rate hike could obviously do damage right and that's what we just spoke about um, in the in the Bloomberg article right so we've got um, a, a rate hike potentially could cause damage to a recovering economy so it might not be necessarily the most positive thing in the world. Um, in fact, it, it's probably going to be a bit negative. So with all that being said, for me, um, I'm looking at potential shorts on the uh, on on the pound. Um, you know, definitely in, in in the near future. And I'm just waiting for the technicals to really kind of set up. If they do, then for me, um, the pound is a short. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar. Euro dollar again. I'm overall short on this currency pair. I think a really nice zone to get short at would be uh, this 117 area just underneath. That's the 116. It's to start looking for potential shorts. Uh, price obviously reacted here on this uh, supply zone, but when you think about where we are from a, uh, a uh, an expensive or cheap area selling at shorting at lows isn't the best thing to do right it's not the smartest thing to do you really want to pull back before looking at getting short um, anyway getting short would be buying the US dollar so with that being said um, you know it's it's a case of uh, um, just waiting for if we can get some sort of pullback if not if prices continue to do something like this then again just to pull back to that area would be where the uh, supply zone would be so um, so again, we've got options, but ultimately, until these this this price action starts to play out, I think for me, looking at getting short around this one seventeen between one seventeen one seventeen fifty five area for me is probably going to be uh, the best type of trade. Europe not doing too well, so Europe's recovery stumbles over supply squeeze driving inflation, as I was talking about earlier. Um, I mean, the world is it's got problems with uh, su um, you know supply chain problems, and uh, Europe area businesses are reporting a sharp slowdown in activity caused by an aggravating global supply squeeze that's also uh, producing record inflation so uh, there's um, there's a quote here that says the ongoing uh, pandemic means supply chain delays remain a major concern constraining production and driving prices even higher both in manufacturing and in the services sector, says Chris Williamson, chief business economist at IHS Market, which compiles the survey. After strong second and third quarter expansions, GDP growth is looking much weaker by comparison in the fourth quarter. So um, fourth quarter um, doesn't look great for the, uh, for the euro. So um, I think uh, the US is probably Going to be ahead of them so with that being said i think again the path of these resistance is to the downside if the data still supports that narrative um if you do want to be a buyer of the euro then um, i think the, uh, the, the the earliest place to really buy the euro is going to be really at the bottom of this range so around this 115 60 115 uh, 20 area 
Moving on to the euro yen, euro yen, and uh, euro was an absolute tear against the yen. Look at that parabolic, um, and we did manage to just touch this uh, the top end of that supply zone. So again, from a technical analysis perspective, the question is why would you want to get short here if the Japanese yen is the weaker out of the two, right? And which obviously it is. But uh, right now, there was a bit of profit taking going on at this moment here. So uh, I think, again, similar to that, the Euro, um, the uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, I think from a short trade perspective, you've got plenty of reasons to go short technically, but uh, fundamentally, do you really want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen? I mean, you would in again, in a risk off environment, right? So risk off, um, the Japanese yen tends to act as a safe haven currency and you should see prices want to fall. But until the safe haven, until that risk off, you know, environment starts to happen, I think the path of least resistance should be again to the upside. But the nearest uh, demand zone again is going to be way down these 129 to 8 area unless prices do make higher highs and then a pull back into that should be demand zone around here before getting uh, long. Moving on to the dollar, uh, Aussie dollar, and Aussie dollar, the Australian dollar isn't necessarily doing fantastic, but it's really being driven by um, uh, commodity prices. So commodity prices uh, going higher, um, and with the um, the Australian dollar being a commodity currency, um, you've really had uh, the uh, it benefit. The Australian dollar has benefited, although um, I think now they are starting to turn a corner. The Australian economy is starting to turn a corner. Um, so I do think um, I'm, I'm looking potentially. I've got it on my radar to be a buyer of the Australian dollar at some point. From a monetary policy perspective, they're not. They're, li they're literally looking to hold rates or not do anything with rates at the moment so it wouldn't be anything to do with monetary policy more to do with just the economic recovery so um but against the, the us dollar it's a bit of a harder trade because you've got the uh us dollar who are ahead from monetary policy perspective so for me uh, it's not necessarily a, a pair I, I look at but if you are interested in this currency pair then really a short from now or if it pulls back up into this higher 75 76 area might be a decent short and if you're looking for any kind of long trades i think that area um, that demand zone around here, the 7, 0 0.742 to 0.7380 is a decent area to look for potential uh, long trades. Moving on to the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen again, uh, we came up to the yearly highs, uh, yearly highs broke through the yearly highs and uh, we've come back down. So I think removing that supply zone, there's a bit of supply here, not necessarily the strongest area of supply. Um, but again, with, uh, with a bit of a recovery in for the, for the uh, Australian dollar, you're seeing uh, that massive uh, demand for the currency. Um, again, buying at these highs, I'm really not keen on buying at those highs, but um, Buying at these those would be a whole lot better that ninety sorry that eighty one area, but um, whether we get down there or not is another problem. So again, if you're you know trying to plot really these paths and understand what potentially could happen, we could see you know prices obviously bounce around here. If you want to get long here, we could see maybe some lower lows, lower highs. Price move up, then pull back to that zone or prices may start to go all the way down to the zone and then look for any kind of buy trades in and around here but um for me I, i'm not keen on that on that area there's obviously going to be a trade there at some point but is it the best trade in the world to take that's the question uh for me i don't like it because it is you know in, in a quite expensive area when you consider this was a bargain and this was obviously a bit of expensive and uh yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, in that area, but I do think there's potential upside. And finally, looking at gold and gold, uh, again, a bit of a tricky one fundamentally, simply because um, you've got some pros and cons going for and against gold. Inflation is a, is a pro against gold, but a strengthening dollar isn't, right? So um, if the dollar does look to strengthen, then um, gold should literally go to the downside. But uh, ultimately, if inflation is seen as getting out of hand, 
then gold should go to the upside as, as gold is a hedge against inflation, right? So it just depends on, on which view you take. Uh, for me, location wise, it's not great. It's not great. Um, I think for me, the path of least resistance is still to the downside if you're looking at a strong or stronger dollar. Um, and I think as long as the, econ the US economy continues to grow, I think, you know, prices pretty much should start to do this. Um, but ultimately, um, until, you know, the, the, the uh, US economy does start to falter, um, like I said, I think I think the uh, I think really it's kind of short trades. Um, I'm not interested in, in in trading gold at any point. I think if I was really interested in trading gold, it'd be at you know the extremes, right? So the extreme lows, extreme highs would be something I might be interested in. Um, again, fundamentally, um, things would have to kind of be aligned with price. But um, anywhere I think around here, if you're looking at short trades, is decent. Um, but just again, be aware that there is potential for a bit of a stop hunt above that uh, 1834 area as that is a very obvious um, uh, level and obvious high so uh, there's going to be a lot of stops above that area so be uh, be careful if you are getting short maybe have a bit of a wider uh, stop loss but um, overall I think you're looking at uh, the better but the recent levels are basically down into this uh, 1760 area but again I think Ultimately, if I'm looking to take any trades, if I was anyway, it'd probably be either at this 1730 area or really down at the absolute lows, the 1680 zone. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this week's fundamental analysis. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care.